Turbo 360. Today we're starting a new series and we're going to do one more of like the, well, for now one more of the like clone app type series because I got a lot of feedback, people like them. And instead of doing like, um, you know, a quick login, a quick, um, this is how you fetch some post type of thing, I really want to do a Yelp clone and what we're going to do is focus on um, right here I just took a screenshot from my phone and focus on making this main screen but making it um, work and doing some more advanced features along the way. So we're going to be more focused on one kind of screen layout but it's going to allow us to go into some more stuff. Uh, I've had some requests for animations that kind of stuff you know instead of and some of the other tutorials were more of us trying to just kind of get like a framework or an app out. We can kind of focus more on some smaller features. Um, for example, uh, Google Maps integration I think is a big one that's um, pretty useful. Um, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so like for example in the app here, when you, when you drag right here, this pulls up this other uh, menu this menu with the different different details of these places so we can do more stuff like that kind of these more advanced features um, which in the other tutorials are more kind of beginner to intermediate focused so once you have those two down um, that's the Instagram clone messaging app just kind of goes through more basics working with APIs navigators that kind of stuff this is going to be more focused on one particular screen that we build out more fully and do more um, features and more advanced features like animations and stuff um, and as we do it I'll explain my uh, thought process as we kind of use different components because to be honest there's not that many um, different components that we haven't already used it's a lot of the same stuff it's just different styling and kind of more um, more intricacies to use them and get these kind of um, looks so in doing this, we're going to need a couple of things. Um, the first thing we're going to need is a, I'll just tell you at a high level. So we're going to use Turbo as our um, express-based API to proxy any of our HTTP requests. And then we're going to use um, a MongoDB database to do these uh, like geospatial queries. So we're going to need to um, sign up for a MLAB account as well, which is all free. And if you ever use Heroku, that's one of their providers and we're going to proxy those requests through Turbo and as always if you have not set up your environment um, which again this is a more intermediate advanced type video series so I hope you have but if not check the show notes for the setting up um, series and that will help you um, that will save us like a half hour to set up stuff so set up that um, I'm just going to create an app on Turbo quick and then an app on MLab quick and link them up, make sure they're working. And then we can kind of just focus on the front end for a little, kind of get those out of the way. So turbo360.co, um, go to apps, scroll the bottom, and call this Yelp map, create your application and this is the only thing we need right here. So grab that. Um, then go over to a new terminal window. And go to wherever you normally do your work. And do turbo. Let me zoom in. I just want to get all these environments specific not environment like server stuff out of the way so we can just kind of dive into the app. Turbo npm i dash g. Whoops, sorry. Turbo CLI. Sorry. Here we go. npm install dash global turbo CLI. Oh, you gotta use sudo.
So basically, if you're working, uh, and again, I could be mistaken, but I believe if you're working with a regular database or Postgres, I don't think they really support these geospatial queries. And again, I could be wrong. That's kind of one of MongoDB's big features. So you can search by coordinates on a map. So you don't have to handle that logic yourself. The database does that search. That's what we need to get prepare, prepared for. So once you're installed here, just do turbo new, I'll call this Yelp API. Call it Yelp Clone API. And while that's installing, let's jump back to MLab here. So this is basically a hosted um, database. And the reason is because um, it will alleviate any like local install issues some of you guys might have. Um, so you don't have to be running Mongo on your desktop basically. And it also it's going to use less resources for you. And then you can always set up staging, production, etc. But for now, let's just go to mlab.com. And let me move this whole so you guys can see. Create new over here on the right. And I'm just going to use this. This doesn't matter. They're asking, do you want to use this? Uh, be hosted on AWS, Google Cloud, Azure. I'm just going to use AWS. Select the free plan. Um, continue. Just pick a region. Doesn't matter. And give it a name. And submit. And again, remember it's free, don't worry. I won't make you guys sign up for anything yet. All right, so that's creating. Let's check back on our NPM install. And I'm going to open that quick. Okay, and well, first we need to um, put our app ID in. So, I'm just gonna. I, sh I still have it on my clipboard. So, just do turbo app with that ID. Again, I'm trying. I like to get all this stuff out of the way, so we don't. We're not in the middle of you know, uh, dragging our map and trying to research, and something's not done now. Um, okay, and you're gonna uncomment this stuff here. Uh, lines 7 through 24 or lines well, env. So it looks like here in our env file we can set a MongoDB URL. Um, so if you look at app.js, right here. Now I'm just for now going to override this whole thing and just put in our string. So we'll, we can come back to that later. But so we need to get this string. So this is where MLab comes in. So go to your new app here and now that's done provisioning and see here it says to connect um, use this here this string here I'll zoom in so you can see and there's this DB user and DB password we don't have one any users at this time so we need to add a user for this this is the same with like all databases so um, and again, I know if you guys did some of the other tutorials, we just used the uh, Turbo Data Store. So again, it's a little more advanced, but a little more um, professional level. So we need to create a user. It's not just like plug and play. So go to users, add a user. Um,
Okay, and I'm gonna take this string here and essentially what you should be doing is sorry let me just make this a string what you really should be doing is this should be a, like an environment variable so no one can see it but I don't want to add like too much extra setup to this so um, I'm just gonna leave it static for now, but just know if it's like a real app or something you're putting on like your GitHub, you want this to be an environment variable. Um, but for now, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna put my name in here because it's not a real database. And let's see if it starts. So I'm gonna run turbo dev server. Oh, get rid of this. We have two uh, instanti instantiations of our app there. So, and you'll see down here we get this DB connect success, right? And if you look right here, this DB. Um, like if I change my name here, let's just put in a wrong name and refresh it. DB connection failed, so it's working, um, which is good news. So, DB. Oh, let me success and if you guys are following along again just get your own uh, database URI from from here on your um, on your MLab thing MLab dashboard again all free um, so you need turbo MLab and once that's all set up we're done configuring our API stuff we can jump back into the app so let's open up another window leave this in the background um, open a new terminal And go to wherever you normally do your work again. Do React Native init. And again, for those of you on, I go over this in that setup video, so check it out if you haven't done it yet on Create React Native app. You gotta run Create React Native app. Yelp. Um, and that's for those of you deploying on Expo and whatnot. And all this like API uh, work and all this hosted stuff. If you guys are running Expo, I assume you don't have um, like an environment capable of running maybe a full Xcode or Android Studio. That's even more more the reason to sign up for using like uh, this hosted database. So none of this is running on your computer. It's all hosted. So. You shouldn't have any troubles running. This is my point. That's why I didn't want to install MongoDB. So let this run. I'm going to kill this Create React app one because I'm not using it. And I'm going to go back to my other one. And we're going to run npm install. So anytime you want to like, if you're doing like a client app or something, you need to like come up with some good animations. Yelp in particular, I think has some pretty good ones. Um, maybe in it, like as we get on, I'll take one or two or like little quick recordings and share them for those who don't have them. But they have some pretty cool stuff like on um, these product pages here, where when you when you drag the, the basically the image will turn into the header, um, which is a good one that I actually want to do in the series. So. All right, once you're installed, again, we usually open up two tabs, so. In one of them, we wanna run React Native Start. And we'll always have that just running. And then the other one, once that bundler is ready, and it does our JavaScript bundle, run React Native run iOS
So while this is installing, it's going to take a minute. Let's talk about at a high level uh, what kind of stuff we're going to have to do. So for example, to get to even this map area, we can see if we get the user's current location. But if not, then we'll have a search for them or a default. That's something we should talk about. You know, is there maybe... And this is by like my exact thought process I go to. Oh, is there a React Native module that will support you know, the user's location? Um, like stuff like that. So if not, do we have to install something non-native? Or how do we want to handle these type of things? So that's our first first thing, is we need to get like the center of the map. Um, and then if not, we'll give them the option to search, or we give the option to search either way. Um, and then we also we need to get this these list of these locations uh, on another screen that we can pull over. So we have to figure out how we want to do that one seems a little tricky. And um, again, make sure you've gone through the, or at least one of like the more beginner focused ones before we get into some of this stuff. Um, and then also when we move the map, we want to redo, hit redo search in the area. We have to decide, maybe we don't want to keep researching, maybe we want to start caching our results to kind of like build up this map locally so we don't have to keep, um, keep moving the map. And also when we do the search for the map, how does the map know what restaurants to search? That kind of pieces at play and I just want to make sure we get our app up and running. do the profile stuff in this because we've already done like login and stuff and again I want to focus on building out this Google Maps based like really nice searching screen so and I will do what I will do is when you click one of these um, like pages I want to build out that screen too because that's the one I would say um, animations so basically picture like this full image here like a header image and as you drag up, the image kind of um, just turns into the navigation bar. And it's pretty neat. And sorry this takes so long, guys. If you guys are on expert, you're probably done by now. While this is running, well, all right, installing, launching. All right, cool. I'm going to open this folder. This is what I hate about Visual Studio is that when you open a folder, it closes your terminal. So I have to re run my, my bundler in the background. I'm going to make this a little smaller, I think. You should be able to see. Yeah, that's good. All right, so again, we got to run React Native Start. Because Visual Studio closed my. And we're not using any of this flow stuff, so while this is loading, get rid of this type props. And just this right here, this props. Um, all right. And then I just want to make sure that everything is working. So just here where it's welcome to React Native, let's just change this to Yelp clone. And let's refresh. All right, so this appears to be working. Uh, next video, we'll get the... Um, start working on our layout. See you guys in part two.